Hi, this is Sherry Hayes from MomDelights.com and I just want to talk to you today about being careful when you are homeschooling that you are not raising a cultural Christian, not, not, not teaching your child to be a cultural Christian. I think if I was going to tell you one of the major mistakes that I made raising you know, my kids, I have 15 by the way if you didn't know that, is that... You know, we raise them to be moral. We raise them with a basic knowledge of God. But do we really teach them about the power of the gospel to change lives? Do we let them know that they can't do anything without Jesus? That their whole lives need to be about glorifying Him? That the flesh, you know, what we see, feel, taste, hear, and, you know, touch this life is not the real life, that it's the spiritual life that has the power. And what causes me to want to teach this to you is a passage of scripture in 2 Timothy chapter 3. I don't know if you're familiar with it, so I'll just read it to you. Um, if I can find it here just a second. Okay, so it says, This know, I'm reading from King James, This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come, for men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemous, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, I think that means they can't keep it together, they can't, don't have any control, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure, more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof from such turn away. So the point being is that there are lots of people in churches, lots of people who, you know, lead worship or lead a youth group or are pastors even, but they don't have the power of the gospel operating in them. And this is very important, okay? Because you have to be, the Bible says, God resists the proud, right? But he exalts the humble. And the Bible says also to clothe yourselves with humility. And what does humility mean? The word humility, it means to be totally dependent on God. You see, there's a point at which you, you can say the prayer, you can say, oh, you know, I believe in Jesus, and especially for homeschooled kids, you know, they've already been through all, they know the Bible, they know the basic Bible stories, they know that they shouldn't kill, uh, uh, steal or murder or anything like that. But if they don't have a change of heart, if they haven't been twice born, if they don't have the new spirit in 2 Corinthians 5.17, uh, then guess what? They're just walking around in the flesh. They aren't really doing anything for the kingdom of God. In fact, they're probably doing more harm than good. Like I was reading in uh, 2 Timothy chapter 3, there are people that have the moniker of Christian, but they haven't really surrendered their whole lives to the Lord, so they don't have any power working through them. They don't want that power. They like this life. They like having the easy Christian life, and the time is closing when that's going to be possible. And if you have, I, I, I'm talking to me, okay, I've had responsibility for a whole, a whole house full of children, and yet how many of them really have understood the power of the gospel? Have I made it totally clear that you can't just be a good person? You can, when you stand before the Lord, it's not going to be about how good you are. It's going to be about how much you trusted Jesus. That's what made Abraham righteousness was his faith. He didn't do everything right. There were lots of times when he was kind of a stinker, you know. Uh, surrendered his, his wife twice to two, to two different rulers and didn't protect her. And just different things he did. But you know what? What made him righteous was his faith. And faith is so powerful. Um, I don't know if you know this, but that passage in uh, 2 Timothy where it says, um, having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof, that word power is dunamis, which is the same word from which we get the word dynamite. 
You see, God puts power on us that's like dynamite. We are, Jesus said, we are lights. We are the light and the salt. We have power in us. Jesus makes all the difference. I cannot tell you how many times in my life that I would not have seen any victory. I would have been, I, I would have been sunk if it wasn't for the power of the Holy Spirit working, working in my life, uh, telling me things, changing people's hearts. I have seen so many miracles. And you know what? We've got to emphasize this with our children that they don't rely on their own moral strength or their own goodness or, you know, they need to be in the power of the Holy Spirit, which is really communion with God, which is really total dependence on Him, which is really relationship. And, you know, we can't force our kids. Our kids are going to make their own decisions, absolutely. But if we can be that example, if we can stay strong and exhibit the power of the Holy Spirit in our own lives, do we? can we hear His voice? Do we walk by His voice? Do we give testimony and talk about how we can't make a step in our lives without the Lord? And if they can see the power of Jesus working and changing lives, it's going to make a difference. And they're going to go out to be world changers for the Lord. So I know it's, I know you get busy. I know how easy it is to get caught up in things like, you know, you've got to get the groceries and you got to get people to their different activities and, oh, don't neglect your walk with the Lord. Don't neglect that. That's the only thing. That's, you need that more than breath or life or food. And your kids need to see that in you. They need to see you walk in that. So let me just exhort you today that, it's okay. I know you slip. Don't feel guilty. Don't let the devil use guilt against you. Just get right back in there. Get right back into prayer. Get right back into the word and just, you know, he's not going to he's not going to chide you. He's not going to be upset with you. Just draw close to him and he loves you. He wants to hold you and walk with you and talk with you. And you know you've already got it in you. You already if you're twice born, you have the Holy Spirit. Just walk in that power and let your kids see it. Well, that's my talk for today. Bye-bye.